So great to see everybody this afternoon. We're gonna wait a couple more minutes and um, get everybody online here that is waiting. Uh, we just turned on our live transcript. So you should see at the bottom, the closed captioning that gets it right about 90% of the time. Sometimes that's a little fun to follow along with and uh, see what it comes up with as it uh, types as we talk. Hopefully you enjoyed our opening presentation to give you a little bit more about what's coming up in your association and uh, the fun things that we've got going on. Um, I'm looking for D. Phillips here on the screen. Um, Alice, are you able to spotlight D. Phillips? Yeah, let me see if I can find her, Tamara. I'll get her. I'll get her spotlighted. Okay, awesome. What a beautiful day that we are um, enjoying today, and this whole week looks fantastic. Why we live here? Right now, we've got uh, thirty-eight ladies on the phone um, or on Zoom with us today. We've got uh, three past presidents with us: Sandy Brooks. I know, Sandy, you want to uh, wave your hand. Um, we have Helen Rush and Lois Wilson. Those were just the names that I saw quickly going through the participants list, and we're delighted that some of our Wahi past presidents were able to join us today because I think Dee is gonna give you a great once over about the impact these women have had on um, our community, our association, and, and the larger island uh, life that we have. Um, I'd like to uh, turn it over to uh, Pat Fall, and she's going to do the presentation um, of uh, Dee Phillips, who's our featured speaker tonight on our environmental and cultural heritage speaker series. And uh, this is the, uh, we have one left to go. We've been spending our, our COVID winter here, January, February, and March, enjoying Zoom uh, happy hour together. And we're delighted that Dee Phillips with the Heritage Library is our featured speaker tonight. Um, just before uh, Pat introduces Dee, there was a couple things that I wanted to share. One is the, um, just give a great shout out and deep appreciation of the Heritage Library. They have been fabulous partners for us this year. Um, as you may have heard in our February membership luncheon, they digitized all of our historical records for us this year. Um, we used to carry big tote, plastic totes around and they were in a storage locker. We still have those because we haven't been able to part with the paper yet, but someday we will. Um, but now we have all of our history uh, digitized and um, great partnership. Hopefully you've also had the opportunity to read on our website posted now, but it also came out in the pink paper um, Wednesday e-blast around our 60 year uh, booklet brochure. And then we've just posted uh, due to Susie Heisman, our webmaster's great work, a milestone timeline project. So you've got just a little snippet decade by decade, and you'll find that on the wahi.org website. And if you go to About Us, you can read both the brochure if you missed it on our, on our history, as well as the milestone decade by decade um, piece. And we just so much appreciate all of the effort that Heritage Library has partnered with us this year. Um, hopefully, uh, my one shout out for all of the different events and things that are coming up, you know, whatever you want to participate in, we want to make sure that you're giving, you're having that opportunity to participate however you feel most comfortable. We are seeing the uh, vaccines roll out through our community for COVID. That is allowing women to pick their head up a little bit more and say, what do I am comfortable doing? Um, again, it is based on your uh, comfort factor for your engagement. We are gonna continue to wear a mask, use hand sanitization, continue to keep social distancing um, at our events until such time that uh, the coast is clear and we hear from our health and our public officials about a change. But for now, we're still masking up and social distancing and doing those things as well. Um, the one thing I would give a shout out for is our 60th anniversary raffle. We have a number of different things that are being raffled away with the grand prize being an e-bike from Hilton Head Bicycle. And we're so thankful for the great prize that they came forward with because that's almost an $1,100 gift. 
And um, I'm a proud e-bike rider and owner, and it's so much fun to get around the island, go to the grocery store on your e-bike. Um, for 20 bucks, you're gonna be able to have a lot of different prize opportunities. So hopefully you can support the charitable fund as well as enjoy um, being part of that raffle opportunity as well. I'm gonna turn it over now to Pat Fall, our program chair this year. And Pat is going to introduce our keynote speaker tonight. Um, over to Dee and Pat. Thank you, Tamara. I have the pleasure tonight of introducing our speaker, uh, Dee Phillips. Uh, Dee is re as a retired Ohio secondary education teacher, <clears throat> pardon me, with a double major in English and German. She has presented at the Con Constitutional Rights Foundation, the Jennings Foundation, workshops at several universities, Ohio Best Practices, Minneapolis Consortium of Legislatures and Community Leaders, ECCAP Writing Strategies, and the New England Consortium for Community Service, to name a few. She was a Division I high school soccer coach. <laughs> Since her retirement, she volunteers with the Heritage Library and Genealogy Library, where she serves as co-chair of the history department. She enjoys writing scripts for living history characters, researching and organizing presentations for the Heritage Library, Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, local clubs and organizations. She believes in the power of education and describes herself as someone who has been lucky to have a career she loved and a retirement that allows her to continue to learn. Take it away, Dee. Okay, um, welcome everyone and thank you. I am going to put up a PowerPoint in a few minutes and block myself out only because there are some pictures on it that with a full screen, it makes it easier for you to see and then I will come back in. So if you do have questions as we go, just um, type them in or, and I think Pat will come back with them or Tamara will come back with them. But to let you know what I'm going to do is, um, we all have read, I'm sure, the information on Wahi. We know that it was organized sitting on a porch. And we know that uh, these ladies, um, started the Garden Club, and their first project was down at Caligny at the Circle. But what I'm going to try to do is tell you some little tidbits that go along with some of the things they found out, what was going on on the island at the same time, and why what the women of Wahi were, were doing was so important, not only to the time, but down the road to our future. So just to give you a little bit, uh, let me get this loaded in. My mouse doesn't want to cooperate. Okay, does, uh, Pat, does everyone have that on their screen? I'm not seeing it yet, no. Okay, um, can you go up in the right-hand corner where it says view and share that? Hang, hang on a second. I think I need to make you, give you the ability to share, D one okay. second. Sorry about that. And this is Tamara D. If I need to pull it up and, and share the screen, I can also do that as well. You should, you should be good to go. Go ahead and try and share it now. Uh, it's not, hold on. It's not letting me. Do you want me to share uh, the presentation me, that you sent to me and then you can just tell me when to advance, Dee? If you're not getting this on your screen, yes, because it's not letting me share. Usually it's up at the top when you're in control with that little bitty thing to go share screen. And so Alice, not. I'm thinking that there's some control with the spotlight that you've, that we've got working because um, Am I sharing now? Yes. Okay, there you we're go. good. Okay. Okay, let me, does everyone see a full screen? 
Yes. Okay. You're not seeing notes and all that kind of stuff down nope. at the bottom? I don't nope. want to interfere with you. Okay, good. Then um, let me get my uh, pack. Can you take me off screen so that they can just do their own or not? You'd have to turn your camera off. Okay, where is my camera on yours on the stop video? Hold on just a minute. I've got it now at the bottom. Okay, good. So everyone is getting that full screen. And what I want to tell you is just kind of imagine the time period and when the ladies that organized Wahi first came. Um, 1958, just to go back in time, was the first deed that was sold in Sea Pines. And to give you an idea, it sold for, that was a beachfront lot for $5,350. That would be fun today, wouldn't it? So by 1962, those lots were selling for about $9,600. And the first year of telephone service was offered by Hargrave, but there wasn't a Hilton Head office for the telephone company on this island until 1960. So the women that are coming here, many of them, of course, Fred Hack and his wife came here in uh, 1950, but uh, most of the ones that are going to meet are coming in around 1960, and of course, Wahi is started, founded in uh, 1961, well, as a, um, a garden club. There was, of course, other things that were going on in that time. There had to be heavy mosquito spraying. Just think about the ladies that are here. The first golf course is gonna open up. Uh, that was built in Sea Pines, it's called the Ocean Course. And Macintoshes are going to give land to start Spanish whales. And then in 62, Port Royal Plantation is going to be started. It's going to be developed by Fred Hack. Banking, ladies. Mm -hmm. um, Banking was Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And it was from 10 o'clock in the morning until 12 o'clock. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you could go to the bank from nine to 9.15. So that was it. So think about that. Um, go ahead and change slides. This is your first president, Nancy McBride Gebhardt. And of course, down at the bottom, I've put the officers who were elected at this time. Now, um, this was a slow process when they first started out. When they met, um, they decided that, of course, the circle was going to be what they would work on. They set aside the time on Mondays from 10 to 12. And the first year, they recorded about 87 hours. They marked trees for removal, they cleared vines, uh, undergrowth, they cleaned up and buried trash. And the first year though, which I am extremely pleased about, they also handed out sea oats conservation cards. Now today, our elementary kids do all kinds of trips over to Mitchellville Beach area, things like this, to collect the sea oats and then end up um, doing some things with them later. So that process is still going on. They also organized the first Christmas luncheon. By the way, they had a plant exchange, which keeps with their um, objectives. Tours in the winter months to different tea plantations and things and then other projects. So they were busy, but again, it is slow moving. Now the club's objective to promote the natural and cultural beauty of the island, promote the love of gardening among amateurs, encourage civic planting and protect native flowers, birds and trees. So as we go through, you're going to see that that is a consistent objective that runs until 2021. Now, Nancy was uh, born in St. Mary's, Ohio and she and her husband, uh, she, they met actually, she was volunteering at a civil rights movement in Charleston. Um, she met him there. He was a young U.S. Naval officer. And then after he left the Navy, they became early residents on the island. Um, this was before they embarked. And then, of course, her time with Wahi. But then they embarked on an international travel and adventure, so to speak. They lived in Mexico, Poland, Thailand, Indonesia, uh, former Soviet Union, 
and then he ended up retiring from the, they re both retired from the government service in 1993. You see, they were with, both of them were with the CIA after the Naval career. So I find it very interesting that your first president um, is ready and very, very active. Now, uh, you can go ahead and change the slide. Nancy's first job was to write a letter out to its members. And of course, we know that there were 23 that end up joining. And she says, by joining our infant garden club, you have signified your desire to further our objectives. And she gives them clearly stated, which are the ones that I just read to you. Now, also in that letter, she thanked a few people. She thanked Charles Frazier, because he's the one who gave the men and the equipment to cut the excess trees, trim the dead wood, bulldoze trunks and roots and things like that. And um, also level off the field. Uh, Fred Hack and the Hilton Head Company uh, ran water lines under the roadway and into the garden project so they would have fresh water for the plants. And Joe Pitts um, gave them a free water supply. Slide four. Here are your presidents during the Garden Club years. Nancy McBride, Jenny Sargent. Uh, of course, Nancy McBride also serves a term in 63. And Emma Palmer, Palmer, she was called M by all her friends. And Ruth White. And Ruth White also is going to serve another term in the 70s. Slide. Just to give you a little tidbit too about some of those. Um, Sergeant, by the way, uh, was born in New York. She lived out on Brahms Point and she was here in 62 and then I'll go to uh, Billy Hack. And then M. Palmer, um, her husband was the first professional uh, golf pro on the island. She also was an amateur golfer and she was one of the founding members of St. Luke's. Ruth White, I told you, served two terms. Um, she traveled with her husband during his military career, and she was the one that also started talking very quickly about having interest groups because of the fact that the Army's wives, of course, belonged to these groups, and she was kind of borrowing that idea. Now, the association starts in 1965-66, and Billy Hack, um, I put up on the slide, the Women's Association holds a fall meeting just to give you the dates and times they were working. From the very beginning, they had the four meetings and you can see her officers um, at the time and also a kind of cultural affairs note-taking about what was going to be taking place for the day. So everything was done. As Tamara said to you before, there's a lot of paperwork to go through. Um, Billy Hack and her husband moved here from Hinesville, Georgia. They moved to Honeyhorn Plantation. And this was in June of 1950. Now think about just for a minute, uh, someone uh, in writing about Billy had always said, what in the world was she thinking? And uh, probably that's a very good question at the time because she came in, cooked on a wood stove, um, at the time, there was no medical whatsoever. Um, she, um, there was no ferry service. You had to schedule certain things on the ferry. There wasn't a, a time that everything would run smoothly. There was only one paved road. Her children attended a one-room school. And by the way, there was an outhouse, yes. And uh, that was taking care of all the needs at the time. She also was one of the founding uh, members of the First Presbyterian Church helped organize the Children's Center and helped find affordable daycare. Now, when the Island Packet wrote about her, they talked about her um, great love of volunteering. And they also talked about that most people, they say Southern women are like steel magnolias. And they said, Mrs. Hack was more magnolia, but everyone knew her sense of right and wrong. She was very much um, into her community. In fact, she would plan a Christmas party every year and invite the entire island. 
So I'm not real sure that I would want to be doing that with everyone. But um, think about the time here that she was here in 1965 um, is the first time we ever did get the island got a medical center. And the medical center was a, a doctor who had retired and moved into Sea Pines. And so that was the only person who was there to keep the practice going. And also in 1965 is the first time that they put together a rural mail delivery service. So the women up until this time, um, it was very hard to get mail. It was hard to get anything. Um, go ahead to this next slide. This is a list of the presidents of 1965 up to about 1980. And as we go through this presentation, since we have some of past presidents here, I hope you forgive me if I don't have a picture of every president because of the fact that number one, some of the presidents were a little camera shy on certain things. But from the very beginning, we had fashion shows. And the fashion shows were extremely popular. So popular, in fact, that sometimes we had to have um, a lunch gathering in one session. And then the next um, time we would have a dinner following very closely to that one because the groups were too large. Uh, there was also formed at this time with the presidents, uh, many of them looked to get uh, something in the nighttime because of some of the women who needed, um, could not get daycare uh, living on the island. And so it was a time that um, you needed to look elsewhere and maybe the husband could take care of the children. Uh, meetings formed then for those, but one of the most popular groups at this time was the furniture refinishing group. And they tell stories about going by certain homes and hearing the sounds of all the woodworking going on. And think about that. Where did you get furniture at this time period? So if you didn't like what you had or what had come over with you, and many of them very early brought it over by ferry, if you didn't like it, you were gonna have to recreate it. And um, Williams, Emily Williams, is one that always had things moving and going in her garage. Other interest groups at the time, um, crafts, Mrs. Jack White, who was Ruth White, uh, contact bridge was going on. Uh, Mrs. Fry's got into uh, helping with the evening groups and Mrs. Townsend. And um, if you look too, if you can see in 1971-72, Mary Grimwald, one of the interesting things about her is her father was a surgeon and he was a surgeon on the Baltimore and Ohio railroads. Now he died in the 1918 uh, influenza pandemic. Uh, but in, she moved later with her family and, and through Clemson. And when she passed away, she actually was the last member of her immediate family. So a uh, very small family growth line, but I found it interesting because she found this to be so wonderful at the time. Now, also a growth on this island at the time, your population in 1969 that would put Margaret, um, and I apologize, I just saw Shirley Blossom has a 1069 uh, date there. I should correct that. Um, 1969, Margaret Killingsworth, um, she was um, the time period when the population was starting to grow. And it was about 2,500 people living on the island at that time. The Harbor Town Village is completed by this time and the Heritage Golf Classic is being played. Um, also going on at this time is what many of you read about in the newspaper about the BASF. This is of course the, um, oil, the chemical plant that was planned to be built off of Hilton Head Island um, on what is called what was called Victoria Bluff. Um, that's now a 1,200-acre refuge uh, wildlife, for wildlife. And to be quite honest with you, it was our Native Islanders, many of them, who are responsible for keeping this because many of them 
were the shrimpers, the co-ops, and they took their boats, 30 of them from Skull Creek and headed out to complain about what was going on with others. And so this was one of the things that brought the publicity that kept us from getting that um, chemical plant built close to us. The Island Packet newspaper um, was starting to be first published in 1970, which would be Shirley Blossom and going into Mary's time period. And the first theater came to the island in 72. And the first movie was Walt Disney's Song of the South, just to let you know what was playing. Uh, a barge about 74, Emma Williams time period, hit the uh, swinging bridge and forced many things to have to be rebuilt. Now, island residents had to travel on and off the island for months on a pontoon boat, which the Army Corps constructed. And the bridge was closed totally for six weeks. So you're on the island for six weeks during that time period. 1975, the population, and that would be Teddy Medlin, 1965, puts us up about 6,500 people. And there's about 250,000 people that came to Hilton Head Island as tourists during that time period. The hospital is going to be completed in 75. And by the way, timeshares start to be sold. So you can see things are going to move quickly. Um, but this time period in the 70s was definitely a time period of building. I will say one thing too, uh, Hurricane David, by the way, came through about 79, uh, but it missed the island, but it did erode a lot of our beaches and it did bring to uh, fruition, the fact that we were going to need to replenish our beaches from time to time. So next slide. Okay, so you have four presidents here. Um, and I think what I will start with is I'm going to start with Corinne Vandenham, which is down at the bottom, and Ruth White. There you can see the two ladies. Can you find your picture? Um, Ruth White, as we said before, was 65, 73 to 74, and um, Corinne was 1967 to 68. So both of those ladies are pictured there. Um, news was important to everyone. And during that time period um, of the 60s and leading into the 70s, our, what we had was a bulletin board. And that bulletin board was on the side of the Bank of Buford building that was located in Caligny Plaza. And this is for notes, things that were for sale, notices of meetings, rooms for rent, et cetera. And then of course, in 65, they started, um, the women started publishing their own newsletter because that was the only way that they were going to get the news out. $3.50 a year to subscribe to subscribe to this newsletter. It was called the Island Bulletin and it first came out in 1967. Now, one of the interest groups at this time, and you have to imagine this would be very um, common sense, is one of the interest groups was for reporters and everyone who could write or wanted to be a reporter had a chance. And the reason that Corinne is so much fun is because she ends up writing in the newsletter and then later for the Island Packet. And she wrote a column called The Sand Dollars. And she wrote this maybe a little bit begrudgingly at the beginning, but she wrote for 20 years for the Island Packet. And before she came uh, to Hilton Head, she had worked in patent offices and different legislatures. Uh, now, Ruth White, was uh, responsible for sending gifts to the state mental hospital. And she did that through rummage sales. And she also helped uh, the island daycare that was starting in some of these times. Shirley Blossom, by the time Shirley Blossom was uh, going, was president, we're starting to get about um, 300 women, maybe a little more. And they had quite a group who wanted to travel 
So a lot of trips were with Elizabeth's group and with uh, Shirley Blossom's group. Now the cultural affairs that started to be the topic in 1965 kind of changed during their service to what you would call the gadabouts. And the gadabouts were women who were taking theater trips to Savannah. By the way, it would cost you $12.50 for your trip and your theater. They also took trips to New York, New Orleans, the Caribbean, London, and Paris. In fact, one of the most fun topics that was written about by Corinne Vandenham was about the trip to London. And um, I do have something about that for you. Now, the Island Packet is going to come on the scene about 1970. And the first subscribers to the Island Packet were the 362 women who subscribed to the island newsletter that was being uh, written by the Wahi Association. And of course, today we have pink. Slide eight. This is what I was telling you about. This is Grant's uh, Sand Dollars article. And if you can see her title, she's quite humorous through all of it. I loved reading many of the things that she wrote. Pussycat, pussycat, where have you been? I've been to London to see the queen. She started out. But she also talks about them losing their luggage, about all of the things that they find. Beanie Newhall, by the way, thanks uh, that we have with their Audubon Society, suitcase got smashed on the plane and her belongings were peeping out one corner before it finally arrived at her room as the governor's uh, house. And Beanie is spending part of her shopping time looking for a new non-smashable suitcase. So you have all kinds of things. Isabel Kearns is in here, but she let everyone know about their trip, what they were doing, uh, and how everything was going. And she did it with humor, and she continued that uh, all the way through with um, her time with the Island Packet. Next one. And here's some of the ladies for you. These are more of the presidents from the 1970s. Isabel Kearns is on the very last left. Uh, Emily Williams uh, was at that time vice president. Uh, Isabel Kearns' uh, presidency was 72, 73. I had to think for a minute. Ruth White is the next lady that we've talked about, 65, 73, and 74. And um, then we had um, Jane Wilpot, I think that is, and she was um, a secretary of one of the groups that was there. Next slide. Here's a list of many of the presidents from the 80s and the 90s. Um, 1980, if you see, Kit Holster is the one who started out. She was a school registrar. Uh, she volunteered also uh, at the hospital and um, loved the traveling group. She was one of the girls who loved the traveling group. And we can see Beverly Cotton. We're going to have some slides on in a few minutes. And many of those will have some pictures as we go through in the 80s. Next slide. We'll start out, though, with our um, Wahi president of 1981-82, uh, Martha Baumberger, who was, by the way, our first and only woman to serve as Hilton Head Island's mayor. She was also chairwoman of the Beaufort County Council. She became president in, um, or, or, sorry, mayor in Hilton Head in 1987. I also put her birth in, and uh, that she died, um, I just read about, I moved here in right at 2012, and I had just read an article about Martha. Uh, she had passed away in 2011. Now, some of Martha's accomplishments, and she was quite a strong woman. Uh, the first mayor uh, who was alive at that time also talked about her character a great deal and uh, what she meant to this island. Um, she put together a capital improvement plan. She founded, um, she wanted the Cross Island Parkway route to be acceptable to the Islanders. She wanted to keep it off from going through the main uh, route. Um, she also is responsible for many of the decisions about nourishing the island's beaches. 
she built two bus stops. And of course, you can see many bus stops now on the island, but at that time, there was no place for anyone commuting or working to get out of the rain. And she also put together money for a rural water district on the island's north end. So her accomplishments are long. Um, now, she and her husband came here in 78. And when they did leave, um, she decided not to run for a second term because she wanted to spend more time with her husband, Bob. Um, when he passed away, I think it was 1999, Martha had always been a, a, a seamstress in, in a sense. She crocheted and did many of her own things. And she made a large Afghan for every member of her family. Um, she laughed because she always said she still had her 1937 Singer sewing machine, which she always made things on. And by the way, she made her own wedding dress. That, that's a little tidbit for you. Um, the final months of her life, she was at the Fraser Health Center at Seabrook. Uh, so in the 80s, and we can go ahead to the next slide. 1982, after this time, you're going to get a four-lane bridge that's going to be built. It's going to replace the two-lane swing to the island. Uh, the population has grown to 12,500, and we have more than 500,000 visitors coming to the island. In 1983, you also have land that started, and again, Martha is one that started looking at buying the land, and in 1988, well, 83, 88, 89, some of that land starts uh, being not, uh, not put together, but set off for certain things. For example, five acres for Caligny Beach, uh, Cross Island Bridge, the land, um, to come down and have certain things at the end of that. And then of course, Folly Beach Road, there was also some. Also the um, first pathway uh, ran from Sea Pine Circle to Palmetto Dunes, and that was as far as it did go. Now, Beverly Cotton was president from 85 to 86. Her officers are over on the right. And by the way, if you look at that, you can see Allison Harden is going to become the next um, president after Beverly. And she presented the town with a thousand dollar gift to landscape the planned town center and awarded life memberships to all of our past presidents. So any of the past presidents out there, if you want to know where you got your life membership from, that's where. Now this is um, Beverly serving um, coffee to Beverly uh, Held. And I find that interesting that I had to have a Beverly Cotton and a Beverly Held. So we're going to move on to the next slide. This is Allison Harden, and she's pouring coffee for Terry Steinhauser. She was president from 86, 87. This would be the silver anniversary time. Uh, the day of the silver anniversary started with Willard Scott. Um, of course, we remember him, and he was on the Today Show, and he gave a shout out on national TV to Wahi, wishing them a happy anniversary. Now, as the story goes, and I'm not sure many of you um, remember this, but um, it was quite interesting the way in which um, they celebrated this silver anniversary. Uh, so if you'll go to the next slide, I'll show you very quickly what I'm talking about. This is what appeared in the paper. In those days, the Islanders loved to say that there were more alligators on the island than there were residents. And so the alligator became quite um, a figure of the time period. Now, 750 members in Wahi at that time celebrated the anniversary luncheon, and this was at the Marriott Hotel in Shipyard, and that would be the Sinesta today. The luncheon hall was beautifully decorated. It had black and white balloons, a fountain of silver ribbons, sparklers, a birthday cake on every table, and of course, Allison Harden, um, the lady that you just saw, 
is going to dress up as Abigail Alligator. And she is the one who greets all of the attendees and everyone coming in and participates in a champagne toast. So now you can see why the drawing, the garden club, all of the arts and crafts, the welcoming of the ladies, the 25th um, silver anniversary, and of course, the toast of the champagne with the alligators. Next slide. Uh, these are several of your presidents. Elizabeth James uh, is in the upper left-hand corner. And I tried to put the dates on there for you so you could see them. Over in the right-hand side is B. Boyd. Down at the bottom, you have several. And one of the things that has always been very nice is that Wahi has always tried to get together all of the past presidents if they came to any of the luncheons and get a picture. And it's been wonderful to have those. So down at the bottom, you see Elizabeth James, Allison Harden, our alligator, Nina Ferner, uh, Jean Applegate, Lorna Smith, Beverly Cotton, and Jan Hilton. And over on the right is Sheila Vanderheimer and Beverly Cotton, B. Boyd, past president celebrating together. Now, around this time in 1992 is when Wahi is going to purchase their punch bowl, their silver tea set, and these are the things that they're going to use. So any that you see in past, um, some of those silver sets, I'm not sure who they belong to, but we do have the purchasing in 1992. They had a jeweler help them um, arranged to find uh, exactly what they wanted. Now, some of the punch bowls, you'll see the ice floating in them. The one that's so famous is that they had one that had a butterfly with everything done on it. And it was just absolutely beautiful. I believe that one is in your scrapbook pictures. Um, your beach nourishment starting to take place and many of your presidents were uh, driving um, to make sure that some of these things happen. The town hall is going to open in the 90s, 92. You're going to have, um, well, Del Webb is going to, about 93, is going to open its first uh, home, about 5,100 acre development. Vim is going to get its location. 1994 is when Coastal Discovery Museum, um, which is the formal museum of Hilton Head and the Hilton Head uh, Chamber of Commerce before a welcome center moved into a shared building along Jarvis Creek on the north end of the island. Uh, 1995 population is about 28,000 and we have grown a little bit in visitors, about 15 million visitors are coming to the island in the 90s. And think back possibly when you first started coming to the island. Um, next slide. This is Corinne that I talked about that wrote that wonderful column and Ruth White again, Helen Fairchild, Peggy uh, Diedrich and Glenn Carlin who were past presidents. And uh, Nina Turner down at the bottom is serving Carol Fopp. And then over on the right, um, Jan Hilton, uh, Gloria Ann, I have to look because mine's marked off, and Nina, and I think it should be Elizabeth Hansen was at that table uh, for this slide. I think so. Yeah. Next slide. Yeah, it would have been, I had to go to the next slide to see who it was. Uh, Elizabeth would be the one who was at the other table. Um, can you go back one for me or not? Okay, um, down at the um, bottom of that, uh, Corinne, when you see Corinne's picture where she's up at the top, um, one other thing about Corinne, I was just uh, glancing at a note, which I find interesting. She was a Fort Mitchell from Ken Fort Mitchell, Kentucky. And she had sat on the city council uh, for the state of Kentucky and the municipal board. And she, there was only two women on that board and only one of them who was not a mayor. And that would be Corinne. 
So she was quite an interesting lady in her accomplishments, but they said that she never talked about uh, anything that she had done. Then uh, go on, go back to the uh, next slide. Helen Fairchild. Helen Fairchild was president in 1997-98. Uh, I couldn't resist putting up a younger picture of her. Um, actually, one of the places that you find a great deal of information uh, comes from obituaries. And um, one of the places that her picture appeared was the young picture that's up at the top. It's just beautiful. So I had to put it down. Um, she was one of the ladies who um, was a, a quilter. And she was one of the founders also of the Palmetto Quilt Guild. And uh, she started an interest group called the Fortnightly Quilters. And um, at this time, you can see past president because the president at the time was Elizabeth Hansen when she was up in the top left-hand corner. There's also some past presidents um, in the small one above Elizabeth, and that would be Peggy Dietrich, uh, Jean Applegate, and Helen Fairchild again. Now, Elizabeth, um, I have to tell you, Elizabeth Hansen still actively volunteers for Heritage Library. She is the lady who does our newsletter. She corrects it, she puts it out. She works with everyone who's talking about it. And I'm not real sure um, how old Elizabeth is. I wish she was around and I would ask her, but she's, she is definitely up enough for an elder. And she is a lady that I will never ever question on anything. Um, Elizabeth, when she calls me to ask for my article for the Observer, which is our newsletter, and she will tell me when the due date is. And then about three days before, she'll send me a reminder. And then the next day she will send me sooner is better than later, D. And then by the time I get that in, um, and then she'll send it back for a correction or two. Now, remember, I, I am an English teacher. And I taught um, some high level writing courses, but I never questioned her. Journalism and English have a, a kind of a interesting relationship. But when she sends something, she'll say, how about if we state it this way? And I never question Elizabeth, I say, fine. And it always comes out perfect. And I always look good because of Elizabeth Hansen. But, um, just to let you know things that were going on during that time period. By the way, um, Jenkins Island is going to be annexed, part of it, um, for Hilton Head at that time. And the Fish Hall Creek Park is um, started. The land is put aside for that in around 98. It doesn't come to fruition until about 2005. Okay, next slide. This is Jackie uh, Cordray, and um, you see her with Marianne Peoples, the mayor's wife. She was a member of um, Wahi, and Nina is with her in the picture up at the right-hand side, and Peggy Dietrich and Jean Applegate. So here's another gathering of some of the president uh, ladies. Now, If you look for just a minute at, um, I guess maybe I'll move to the next one, just on the grounds of, I wanna talk about uh, Corday and, and Rush. Hold on just one minute. I think we're off one slide. Go back to um, Jackie and I'll just talk about her and then move. I think we're missing a slide. Go back to Jackie. Okay, so Jackie, just to let you know, um, during this time period around the up 1993-94 when Jean Applegate that you saw her with over in the right, Jean was a teacher, real estate, um, Girl Scout leader. Um, her interest featured toward education as many of your presidents do uh, did. And then Nina and Peggy, also were interested in environmental issues. 
um, the Shelter Cove Park is going to start to be talked about at this time and around 2001 is when we're going to see that take place. Now, Jackie is also going to come uh, fort in the next, um, as a force to reckon with when we get her to write the history for the 50th. So we'll move on to Helen and then I'll talk about Jackie uh, and hopefully that slide will come up. So go to the next slide. Should be Helen Rush. Okay, so Helen Rush is to the left. Uh, Helen Rush is over with Emma Kelly and also a past president, Eloise uh, Stidwell. She's the president elect in this picture um, that's going to be in the next year. And up above is James and she is featured um, with several people. I have to remember who that is. Um, B.J. Fallon, I think. Yeah, so Helen Rush is up in the upper right. She's the lady on the right-hand side and B.J. Fallon. And then of course, Elizabeth uh, James Rale Raleigh is the one who is serving. Uh, just to let you know about this time in the 2001, we start to see Mitchellville Park open or at least being talked about 18 acres are set aside for that. And then uh, Barker's Field is going to take place. So you can see the island growing along with uh, concern for all of the environmental things that are taking place. Next slide. And this is a list of your 2000 presidents. The picture over to the right, uh, Lois, um, I'm going to murder her name. Um, so just bear with me. Shiroki, I think is the way, Marianne Putnam, Julie Olson, Eloise um, Stidworthy, and Helen Rush are the featured past presidents who are there. Um, during this time period that this board is, is um, that the board is active in the, um, right after um, Helen, is when you have um, Coastal Discovery Museum is going to move out of its location and it's going to relocate to Honeyhorn. And we are going to have a uh, renovation and things that are going to be needed to take uh, place. The town is actually going to help with that. And you are going to see many organizations who take place uh, and make that a priority for them. So next slide. Now, uh, Eloise Stidworthy is 2001-2002, uh, and in celebration of Wahi's 40th anniversary, they commissioned a sculpture by Walter Palmer. Most of you know this, this whimsical bronze pelican uh, sitting on a, beach, a bench reading a book that's entitled Tales of Hilton Head. It's just beautiful and I can't think of anyone who comes in that stays on the island very long that doesn't go up and sit and get a picture with this bird. I have quite a few friends that have made that their Christmas card. Uh, it was a gift to the town. It was originally placed at Shelter Cove Community Park, but later it was moved to the Coastal Discovery Museum. Uh, and it sits in front of the Armstrong Hack Home where anyone can visit it and they can have their pictures taken. Now, 2000 um, and starts a very, very active year. Um, Eloise was a teacher. She also was a trainer for leadership and developmental groups. And she was interested in the art center and bringing more art to this island. And so the population at this time was about 34,800, something like that. I've forgotten the number, but 348. Um, the next slide, please. This is uh, Judy Brown. Next. There we go. Okay, so Judy Brown, and she's with a group of volunteers from uh, Shelter Cove area. And of course, we know that many of our groups um, get together in their communities and attend and take their tables and, and really go all out. I know I'm in Palmetto Hall and my Palmetto Hall uh, friends who belong to Wahi are extremely active. 
Um, and Judy Brown is that time period of 2006 and 2007. And it's going to be a time period of really concern about um, pathways, extending them, uh, looking at the drainage and the problems that are on the island, um, helping um, Deep Well in some places. So you'll see that as we go through. Next slide. These are some of your past presidents and I had to get, this is one of the few pictures that I could find. It was in the paper, of course, you can tell. Um, the Women's Association, uh, if left to right, Marilyn Edie, Judy Brown is there, Lois, Allison, Beverly Cotton um, up on the back, Annette Martin, Jackie, um, I'm sorry, that would be your back across. And in the front, left to right, you're going to see Carol Wolf. Um, I, as soon as I saw the picture, then I knew I'd started backwards. Jean Applegate, Lois Wilson, and Jan Hilton. And um, this group of ladies, past presidents, one of the largest that they've had um, together, all pictured, I believe. Okay, so next slide. Um, I pulled this picture of Rosella uh, Morris because of the fact that um, she was president in 2007, 2008. Remember, I told you that some of the concerns were with pathways and drainage and things at that time. Well, Perry White uh, was one of the speakers and he came in. Perry passed away maybe a year and a half ago. And he was quite active here on the island as a native islander. Um, Union Cemetery is where he is uh, buried. That's where his family group is. Anyway, he was speaking about growing up on Hilton Head and talking about the families here and the islands. And one of the things that drawing this attention to the sewage problems and the drainage and the things and the pathways that were being built and the needs of many of the islanders also things as far as heirs property. So we're getting more and more of that to light. And then a few years just previous to this, the land has been set aside for the Mitchellville Park. Um, the drainage and the, not the drainage, but the pathways that were uh, extended go down through Matthews Drive at this time. Over on the right is Rosella Morris uh, passing the gavel to uh, Judy Bogle. Next. And I believe I saw Sandy's picture when she came in. So I know Sandy's here. I, I didn't hear the other names, but um, Sandy will remember this time. If you hear something barking, that will be my dog. <laughs> I apologize. Um, if um, Sandy should remember all of the things that were going on because this 2010-11 is when we're going to start our 50 year anniversary. And the town is supported, um, is also gonna start supporting the Heritage Golf Group at this time. They're gonna give them a 1 million uh, commitment to the uh, Heritage Golf Group. Um, now it wasn't our February uh, vintage fashion show uh, when we walked down uh, the lane um, and trying to remember our 50th anniversary, because we always have to have that. But you have many past presidents who are going to be active at this time. Uh, Glenda Partington, Judy Vogel, Rosella Morris, um, Judy Brown, Lois, um, uh, Marilyn Eddy, uh, Jackie Corray, uh, Elizabeth Hansen, Gloria Ann, Jan um, Carlin, Jan Hilton, Jean Applegate, Nina Ferner, um, Annette Martino, Allison Harden, and Beverly Cotton. And the fashions that were taking place at this time, many of them were vintage, I believe, and they were just fabulous. Um, I think one, every one of, from what I've heard, every one of the outfits could still be worn today. Now, thanks, uh, we had choreography that went on. Um, Carol Harden helped with the show too. Uh, she was thrilled with her collection. I believe there were some vintage wedding dresses and I'll let Sandra tell me if I'm wrong about that. Um, Cord Ray also um, is the one who wrote the history 
for Wahi. Wahi has been wonderful about publishing not only what was taking place for the 60th and their meetings and leading up to it, but they've also um, had a history that accumulates and that tells a great deal of the story. And if you haven't read all of them, um, you really should because they are uh, extremely uh, informative and very well written. They also had an anniversary, had a high tea at Honeyhorn and um, Honeyhorn Plantation. It was uh, 2 p.m., I believe, on May 4th. And everyone was looking for that special high tea dress on the island. But um, I don't, I'm not sure everyone found it, but I think most of them did. Uh, you'll, they sent out a notice telling everyone that they would get a special invitation in the mail. And um, as her president, she wrote, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this year's interest groups and luncheons. Next picture. Next slide. This is the cookbook. And this was the highlight of the 50th celebrating. All of the sales, uh, they're made up $15,000 that was donated um, to the town of Hilton Head for the renovation of the old Gable farmhouse. And this is up on the grounds of the Coastal Discovery Museum. And there was a champagne toast and Sandy remarks, what a great 50th anniversary we had. And here's to another 50 years. I hope she's correct. Okay, so next slide. Here are your ladies who were featured of uh, the past presidents who attended the tea. And you can see that some of them also made sure that they found that hat. Uh, back row, let's go from left, Judy Brown, Annette Martino, uh, Jacqueline Cordray, Lois Shirky, uh, Carol Wolf, Sandy Brooks, and Sally uh, Kingry. And then from left in the front row, Lois Wilson, Mary Catherine uh, Plowden, uh, Marilyn Eddy, Elizabeth Hansen, Rosella Morris, and Judy Vogel. Look for a moment. And the next slide. This is the Gable House that was going to be renovated and the article that was written about it. And of course, you can see your president, Sandra Brooks, there cutting the ribbon. And they put a name plaque that that money uh, came, or Wahi's name, on the porch, I believe. Next slide. Okay, so here's some other of your ladies. Down at the bottom, you'll see um, across the front row is Jan Kendall, uh, Glenna Parrington. Uh, she was 2009-10. Sally uh, Kingry, uh, third one in there. She was 2011-2012. Uh, I remember her being um, past president when I moved here. Betty Bush, then you have Sandy Brooks, 2010, 2011, Char Long, um, 2012, 13, and um, Mary Thomas is sitting at the end. Rugby, no. Up at the top, um, you have some of the members that are there, back row. <laughs> I'm gonna have to move the dog, guys. Anita Lozer, Mary Schmatic, uh, Nancy Denzi. Um, Dietzy, uh, Jan uh, Michael, Priscilla Loban, Marie Donahue, Charlotte Willis, Susan Stafford, and Linda uh, Hamp. Okay. This is, of course, Donna Mansky and her husband, Fred. And this is in the background there, this beautiful camellia garden. Um, their home, of course, is proof. They have uh, created their own garden there, but they also created a garden at Honeyhorn. And um, Donna was your president 2014, 2015. Um, at the Honeyhorn, 
as they were walking around one day, they thought it would be a beautiful place for a camellia garden. And there's 131 exotic historic plants, uh, blooms from Halloween uh, to St. Patrick's Day, uh, 1.2 acres. There's a plant there, uh, Alba planta, that is got the, oh, about 500 white little petals that goes through. Um, a gift that was given to them from the Magnolia Plantation. Uh, the Magnolia Plantation this ha had this plant, and this plant originally was a 1676 plant that was brought, uh, bought by the, or rather was produced by the Drayton family. But this was over in Charleston, not the Drayton Plantation here. Um, one of the things that's so interesting about this is because of the fact that this garden out at Honeyhorn uh, earned a spot on the American Camellia Garden Trail in 2016. There's really only about 30 other gardens at that time nationally. Um, and by the way, none of the plants, um, none of these camellias are native to America. Now, obviously Donna loves gardens, um, but she also had a background in leadership. She was a leadership coach and education, I can remember that the first time I met Donna, um, she asked me what I was I was doing or what I did. And of course I said a teacher, she goes, oh, you should really look into our service awards. And so um, she was always uh, making sure that everyone knew the opportunities in Wahi. Next slide. This is a quote by Sue Todd, who was president, and I wanted to give this to you because you can see as Wahi is evolving with all of the different interests and lending itself toward which the way that Hilton Head is growing. And Sue, she wrote up, someone asked her about what Wahi was about. And she said, Wahi provides an opportunity for women to branch out beyond their community gates to build friendships, pursue common interests and provide service. So far this year, we have groups focusing on the arts, books, travel, computers, games, gardening. You can read that for yourself. But what she did say at the end was that each interest group has its own identity and operates as its own entity. She gave women the opportunity to go out and meet people who had similar uh, interest, but yet still have that feeling of being in a small group. And I thought that was wonderful, the way in which she said that. Next slide. This was your 2019 board and council. And I don't have all of the names in front of me for that. Next slide. Tracy Harris. Uh, by the way, 2017 would have given you Kathy Reynolds and Sheila Ferguson, I believe, would have been 17, 18. And then Kathy, I mean, Tracy is going to come in at 2019 to 2020. And Tracy will all remember, I know, the Charleston Shoe Company. But one of the things that that did was bring in women who are in their own businesses. And also how they become, uh, how they use their power to... Um, start their own business. And I think it is something that all women uh, maybe feel like, oh, I don't know about you, but I've thought about 40 businesses that I would have liked to have started. Um, the next slide, please. I think everyone knows Tamara, and we've uh, talked to her already today. Tamara has this wonderful um, ability in 2020 and 21 to say to yourself, how am I going to manage a pandemic? And what a chore to be tasked with. And of course, she's been around the scene so she can, um, you know, talk about it. But when they did ask her, she said, out of 550 women, some don't want to leave their houses. Others are comfortable going out to a restaurant. You have to cover the waterfront with the programming. I love the way you said that. She also said, in spite of current social distancing, challenging, Wahi, founded in February of 1961, now over 500 members strong, has been quick to shift gears without losing sight of their goals. Next slide. 
this is one of the ways in which Wahi, during this trying times, has looked for different avenues to do. Now, 100 women showed up for their first web, uh, webinar. And then they went on to have a book, a series of authors. And they continued with 80 plus attendees coming from uh, remotely. The Fall Chef series uh, was equally popular. It offered both in-person and online options according to what, as she said, you were comfortable with. People just really want to get together. Uh, the events allow small groups to get together, to meet, greet in a social distance way. Uh, now the ladies are Zooming, and I'm sure you're all pros with it. Um, spring programming that she had aligned with many of Wahi's past events that were environmental and that were cultural. The interest groups also could meet online. Everyone, I guess, is uh, the way in which Tamara put it, is learning new skills. Who would have thought we would have had this capability? And I'm sure that the ladies that are running this today are sitting there going, absolutely, this is unusual, but we are living through it. Next slide. These are some of the ways in which living through it. You can see the shop and dine, Meals on Wheels, Jean Good. Um, there, you can oversee the way in which second helpings gathering food as a handoff or a donation to help over on the right. Uh, Patricia uh, Levitt down at the bottom was a lady who had her own, um, she was a speech and language pathologist, I believe, but she had a way in which she made these pillowcases to help kids learn. And when her business closed, she donated these 250 pillowcases to the local boys and girls club. And she's going to continue to do something like this. And you can see entertainment, but you can also see masks on everyone and what they're, um, what they're doing. It's uh, a wide variety of things happening um, in order to keep people feeling that they can be together. And if any of you um, have friends back we are so lucky back where we've had snow and they haven't been able to get out or meet outside. We had such an advantage too, to be able to plan some activities. Now, the next slide introduces you to your new president who's going to be 2020-21 and that's Betty Hamilton. And she, I believe there was a picture scrolling through where she was welcoming others uh, with coffee and it was April the 3rd of 2001. And this will be your new president. And I know we've already seen a letter that came out. So next slide. So come sit on my porch, I guess is the way I would like to close this out. So far as Wahi finishes up with their 60th celebration continues until it's over, they, um, they have to remember, and we have to remember who we celebrate, who we are, who we are as women on this island. We celebrate new social adventures and new unusual ways to celebrate those social adventures. We take with us our history. We uh, take our memories, our causes. We're adaptable because of the leadership that we've had, because of our membership that continues to work tirelessly for new ideas and new ways to celebrate together. From a group of women sitting on a porch, helping each other get through the day to day, to an association for women, helping newcomers to the island, helping them find a way to get through the day to day. We have to salute our members and we have to salute them because they have solved, the, they are doing a day-to-day -day solving of problems that only women can do. So I ask you, as I close this out, this is Wahi, this is who you are. So come and sit on their porch and see where you fit in and see where you can add to the lives of others. Women make this island stronger and come and see if you can make some lifelong friends. Thank you. Thank you, Dee.
That was so fabulous. What a great, that was a very quick 60 years of uh, women and women's leadership and all of the contributions on tracking with our island and our island community development. So thank you so much for all of the personal time and, and attention that you put in um, lovingly to that presentation and telling the Wahi story through the women leaders that we have. Um, thank you all for hanging in there. We know the program went a little long today, so hopefully you're not going to be late for your dinner plans, but we I'm just thought it was really important that um, Dee was able to share this time and, the, and this information with you. So thank you all for turning out tonight. Uh, we're going to get our recording up so that other women can watch it in our video library. Who would have thought that at the beginning of the year, but we're doing it. And um, we look forward to seeing you around. Go buy your 60th raffle ticket and come on out to an event that's coming uh, coming soon. Talk to you later. Thanks a lot, Dee. Oh, you're Bye. welcome. I apologize for running over. Good. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Pat, for all your help.